great. So there definitely will be something to look forward to. There definitely will be an increase there in definitely. terms of yep. good. Yes. Okay, now the Department of Sports, which you presently lead, um, what is it doing to award people for sports achievement? You know, one of the things that always have been said in terms of how we award people for their, their, their involvement in sports, our push of our athletes, and so on, really can go a far way and sometimes we take Jamaica as an example the support system that is there for the um, the athletes and so on okay well one mm. of the things is that the the annual scholastic sports award has been dormant for several years um, this year it is it it is going to be revived and in a big way uh, we have the annual scholastic, the rebirth of the scholastic sports awards, which will be hosted at the Governor General's, um, you know, at um, Government House next week, Wednesday. So that is Wednesday the 13th. And what is going to happen at that event, I think, is actually very, very significant. We are the top three persons in each sport that is organized under the auspices of the Ministry of Sports at both the primary and the high school level is going to be, each person is going to be, you know, recognized. Yes. So we are talking basketball, football, mm -hmm. athletics, um, tennis, netball, cricket, because all of these, many persons don't often see these mainly because they are currently, to a large extent, run during school hours. Yes. So persons don't necessarily see them. But the Department of Sport is out there, still working, still yes. working hard, and working with hundreds of children. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that you have this. And then, of course, um, following that, beginning on the 18th, which is the following Monday, yes. will be the annual sports camp, where again you will have all of these disciplines, where now you get an opportunity to work directly with coaches, to work, um, to partner with your peers, to create old friendships and everything. And we have several partners including the national federations and this and um, again this year the um, St. Kitts Royal Golf Club, the Marriott Golf Club is actually partnering to offer yes. a golf club, um, sorry, a golf camp where for the two weeks of the sports camp persons will be able to be to choose golf where they will be over at the Marriott, I think from 10 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. They will have golf professionals teaching them the sport right. and everything. And, uh, um, and then on the completion of the camp, the St. Kitts Golf Club, again in partnership with the Department of Sport, is extending so that for the next four weeks, those individuals can continue to go to the Marriott Golf and play for free. Okay, but during that time, will the summer sports camp and the golf, the Marriott, would run concurrently? They would run concurrently because within the summer sports camp, you have football, you have netball, you have volleyball. Um, there are so many, there are many different, right? There are, mm -hmm. there, there are several different disciplines that occur tennis right. um, so that you 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 actually get to pick you you <laughs> actually get to pick what you want to do mm -hmm. and just involve yourself right now what what are the age what are the age category um i know for the categories yeah. for the categories they go they normally go up i think to the age of around 16 mm -hmm. for the golf they're going up to the age of 14. okay yes. but what do they is it 7 to 14 8 to 14 
I am not quite sure of the lower age category, mm. but I would think that it's about six, seven years old, yes. To 14. To, seven 14, to 14, right. For the golf, it's seven to 14. For the camp, I think it's just under 16. Right. Okay, what about the sponsors? Who's sponsoring this? For the, um, the Ministry of Sport partners with several entities. Um, and the, if I were to start listing sponsors right now, um, I would look like one of those, you know, I would sound like one of those billboards that's just scroll over. <laughs> um, the, however, the Marriott Golf Program would like me to highlight that they are being co-sponsored by um, the Scotia Bank and by the Rams group yes, of, of companies. But in terms of the overall camp, this camp is run in conjunction with the Ministry of Education, yes. with the National Federations, National Olympic Committees, and also through all of the entities that have been individual sponsors um, of their competitions throughout the year. So that would be RAMS, that would be TDC, that would be... Mm -hmm. So all of this really is possible, not just through the direct sponsorship to the camp, mm -hmm. but also to the overall sponsorship of the agenda of the Ministry of mm -hmm. Sport mm -hmm. for the entire year. Mm -hmm. now, now, sport is an important aspect of our development. Why is it so important to our development as a people? One... And if it is so important to our development as a people, do we have a national sports policy? And what should such a policy address? Okay, so <laughs> let's go. One, it's important to, to us. Right, yes. to us. Do, do we have a national sports, sports policy? policy? That's and easy. Currently, no. Uh, and three, what and should it address? If we are to have one. What should it address? Okay. The importance of sport the simple direct answer to is sport important is this right now 80% of all deaths in St. Kitts Nevis come as a result of lifestyle diseases and that's a huge number we are talking the cancer the diabetes the hypertension those things which are controllable if we were to get more exercise, eat right, de-stress our lives, do the things, do, do all of the things mm -hmm. that occur naturally through your participation in sport. So the first thing is that you will find that for communities that have more physical, how should I put it? Their citizens are more physically involved. Mm -hmm. What you get is that you get a healthier population. A healthier population means lower medical expenses. It is, I will put it this way, for what it costs, to cure one person of cancer. Many persons argue that it can never be cured, that it's just treated. Mm -hmm. But I will use the term, cure. What it costs to cure one person of cancer can actually run a physical education program for any large primary school, I guarantee you for several years. Mm -hmm. So, the point that I would like to make from a health perspective is that if we were able to get more healthy persons, sport actually pays for itself. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that we mentioned it earlier. Right now, the heart, the, 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 the motto of the Heart Foundation, which is from our Ministry of mm -hmm. Tourism, is follow your heart to St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. We would like to be able to partner, to add value to that, 
because if you are coming for sun, sand, and surf, what you are saying is that you are coming to the Caribbean. So if you are in the US, why not go to Florida? Why not go to Bahamas? Yes. Why not go to Turks? Why not go somewhere else? Why come to St. Kitts? Mm -hmm. We say come to St. Kitts because we have a product that we can, how should I say, we can actually address your passion. We can speak to your passion. We can speak to the persons that are passionate about football and about cricket and about netball and about track and field. We can speak to the passion of the individuals. Mm -hmm. And so that is... That is the second part of it. And then the third thing is simple. Excellence. Let's talk a little about 2003. When Kim Collins won mm -hmm. the World Championship in Paris on the 100 meters, British Virgin Islands, Trinidad, and several other countries actually had public half holidays to celebrate this. Mm -hmm. Because the self-actualization of a people okay. comes from that sense of we are excellent. And also, it has been, I have seen the figures which suggest that within 24 hours of Kim Collins winning that race, two billion persons in the world looked at the race. Two billion, not million. Two billion, and over the last um, what has it been now? Thirteen years, they have calculated that in total about four billion persons have looked at that race. That is marketing value. That it's extremely difficult to put a dollar figure on. Mm -hmm. um, that is why you can understand that one minute of advertising for the Super Bowl costs more than $20 million per broadcast market. So it's just not $20 million, but it's $20 million per broadcast mm -hmm. market. It's a billion dollar industry. Right. So that's so both so in terms of economics, in terms of the social development, and also in terms of just what makes sense. Right. So health and fitness, of course, which yes. you outline, mm -hmm. um, sp and sports development is, yes. is actually tied to tourism development. Yes. Um, improving our sports tourism is big yes. tourism today. Yes. Discipline, our young people. Oh yes. The oh, discipline, yeah. the morale, good morale, discipline. And we do need to give our young person something positive to do. Right. Because, um, I will put it this way, the saying the devil finds work for idle hands mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is actually an honest saying. And what happens is that too often, if we don't, um, if we don't find the positive things for our children to do, we are guilty, we are just as guilty yes. of pushing them towards the negative mm -hmm. things because water must settle. Right. <laughs> right. So the recreational value is really even tied to yes. other things such as discipline and, and morale. Yes. And then jobs, employment, sports provides employment. Yes. I, I remember you speaking about the CPL and, and the CPL so many persons and it, were employed. Right, over 200 persons mm -hmm. employed as a result of the CPL. And the self actualization yes. of which you spoke. And then the nationalism. Yes. You spoke about Kim Collins and we feel proud as a people. Yes. And the patriotism that right. we have. Right. You know, and then productivity. Because that is true. if you don't have a healthy nation, they say a healthy nation, nation is, a, is wealthy a wealthy nation. nation yes. Because if we have a workforce, for example, that is not healthy, then of course productivity is reduced. Yes. And that is going to affect, you know, our GDP and all of that sort mm -hmm. of a thing. Right. And on to the other point now. Um, the sports national policy. sports policy. We have to a large extent embraced 
a draft um, a draft OECS sports policy um, which came out somewhere back in the 90s it is not current however what makes sense in sports does not necessarily change in a hurry mm -hmm. uh, when you look at um, a document which was created by um, I think it's UNESCO yes um, in terms of the development of national sports policies and the pillars for um, of that document which has been embraced by countries as large as the United States and as right. small as you know small would have it and you look at those pillars one sports for all mm -hmm. um, Sports for all is a question of providing physical education and physical engagement from, for persons from the cradle to the grave. Yes. We still have an archaic way of thinking that persons are too young or persons are too old. Um, persons are too young is right now fueling the fact that the, the largest percentage growth of hypertensive diseases, diabetes, and cancer is in the age group of 15 to 40 right. within our population. Mm -hmm. And that's because we have not developed physical education and um, physical activity as a habit. And it doesn't have to be sport. Yeah. It can be dance. It can be going out there and playing masquerade. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know... Physical exercise. Physical exercise. And as I said, physical engagement. It could be gardening. It could be walking. It could be walking, right? It could be that instead of driving around town for 15 minutes to try to find a parking spot in front of, in front of where you yes. walk, that you park three minutes away, four minutes away, and you walk to where you work. I remember at, um, at one time I was parking on Market Street and working on Church Street. And persons would ask me, why are you parking so far away? Mm -hmm. I said, but it's a minute and a half to two minutes. They said, oh, I, you know, I, 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 I got a parking on Church Street, but I drove, I had to drive around for 15 right. minutes before somebody came. Right. So that was 15 minutes of unproductive time mm -hmm. where you're sitting down, mm -hmm. sending up your blood pressure because, right. because you refuse to walk before, because you refuse to walk for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's the concept of Sports for All, to just get everyone in and all of the benefits that go with that. Right. The second thing, of course, therefore, is sporting education. First thing is um, the Ministry of Sport within the next year or two is going to um, engage itself in the development of a proper primary school physical, um, physical education and sports program which goes from pre-K all the way up to grade 6. Um, so we are looking at that. We are also looking at shaping reshaping the whole idea of the scholastic sports. Right mm -hmm. now, too many persons see it as disruptive. But I am proud to say that just, when was it, last year, we had someone who came out of the Florida State right. University, FSU, with a master's degree, not having, had, not having paid a single cent, because her athletic prowess paid for that. Right. You know, so, it, scholarship. Scholarship. Uh, and you know that that is so important to get an education. It's not about pushing one over the other. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes we get very envious when we see these basketball mm -hmm. players and these um, football players and so on making millions of dollars. And you said, but look, they didn't go to university. They don't have a PhD. They don't have a master's. They don't have a bachelor's. But yet they're making all this money. So when we hear, but that's, sports is only for a time. One injury, you could be out. Professional sports is only for a time. Yes. Sport is for life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that correction. 
professional sports is only for a time. But even sports is, you know, I mean, you can't be as, as agile and so on when you're 20. I the same saw, when you're... I met someone who started weightlifting at the age of 62. And the person is now 95, 96. They lift weights, they go jogging, and they go dancing. Mm -hmm almost well they dance three four times a week they do salsa they do ballroom and but they exercise every single day their mind is sharp like a razor persons say you look persons tell them that they don't look you know a day over 60 right and they're in their 90s and someone in their 20s would think that they look old but then, if you think about it, they're 90, mm -hmm. and they look 60. Yes. You know? So I, it, 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 it's... I think there's some correlation between sports and education. Sport in education. Yeah. Because they both require discipline. They both require discipline, yes. And a properly structured program is also going... A properly structured program actually uses that and enhances that which some of the for instance issues that we have to look at within the concept of the sports policy of a national sports policy for instance is um and it it, it really is a hot button topic but who should coach mm -hmm. um you know we are discussing the issue of a national sporting license similar to a driver's license yes. because there are persons out there who are coaching that they are not trained first responders so persons get injured and they compound mm -hmm. the injury so they don't understand you know anatomy physiology biomechanics right. and all of that then there are persons that don't understand their role in creating safe environments for persons um unfortunately in any um in any sphere where you have pe persons working with young people mm -hmm. you have to make sure that there is no abuse yeah. that there are no predatory practices etc 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 so you know um part of the whole concept of the development also has to answer some of those you know also has to answer some of those questions mm -hmm. so it, it it's it's you know right now you're only on the second pillar <laughs> we have right we have what three more pillars or two okay. more? three more well simple mm -hmm. sporting excellence which yes. i think we touched on before mm -hmm. um you know as i said just as people need to be actualized a nation needs to be actualized and you have, you know, you know, excellence through sports and excellence in sports. Right. And then the development through sports. Yes. Which CPL is an excellent example mm -hmm. of that. And persons need to understand. Saying it's, um, I don't yet have the figures for Nevis, but saying it has over two hundred million dollars invested in sports and recreational facilities over 200 million dollars and therefore um, during the course of the next 12 months one of the things for instance that the department of sports has been tasked with organizing is a sports entrepreneurship course where persons who are looking to set up new businesses just as we have agriculture looking at the you know agro processing and we have you know the tourism looking at the development of eco tours and different aspects we also now want to want to establish a desk which allows for young persons and not so young persons who really have a passion about sports to be able mm -hmm. to develop a business plan yes. which allows them to create a business model right. through sports okay. therefore in, you're not therefore
creating local economic value because mm -hmm. too often when persons hear sports especially when you think of a NBA contract for 200 million dollars or a baseball contract mm -hmm. for you know you know you know half a billion mm -hmm. dollars persons think of sports and persons think of international sports yes. and we want to be able to take it to another level because if we are able to bring that value then it means that um, we create a sector which then can grow out into other into other markets mm -hmm. which in the common market we don't always have to defend yes, yes. we cannot and then the last thing of course we touched on it are the facilities mm -hmm. how do you manage maintain develop improve yes. and use your sporting facilities for the benefit of all citizens.